Good morning. <laughs> and welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church on this uh, strangely warm January morning. How often do you get to say that? Uh, but it is warm, and we're glad that you're here uh, in out of the drizzle anyway. Uh, if you're a guest among us, we invite you to fill out the, uh, one of the cards that's in the pew rack in front of you, drop it in the offering plate as it comes by, and that'll help us connect with you uh, in whatever way uh, might be good for you. On the inside of your order of worship, you'll see a calendar of upcoming events. Um, it's uh, rather long uh, for January, uh, but, uh, but that's not a bad thing. I'm going to point out a few of these uh, and, and let you read through the rest on your own. The, uh, the first is note that the church office is closed tomorrow from MLK. Uh, that would be a holiday in the personnel handbook, so we're closed that day. But the Brotherhood Potluck is happening at 6 p.m., and Matt Green is the athletic director from LMU. He will be the guest speaker uh, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, in the Fellowship Hall. On down, you'll notice on the 18th that the handbell choir begins rehearsal again after the holiday at 5 o'clock Wednesday the 18th. Normal uh, Wednesday activities. And then Friday night, uh, Melissa McGeorge and Lawrence McGeorge are hosting the young and youngish adults at their house. Uh, that's 7 o'clock. And then there's, uh, there's more on down, as you'll see. You can read that. But on the back, well, I want to point your attention to the uh, note about the Super Bowl of Caring. That is just around the corner, folks. It's the first Sunday in February. Uh, bring a soup or a chili to share, and then bring a donation for the CCM Food Pantry with you. That'll be immediately following church on uh, Sunday, February the 5th. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. No, Kevin Barnett, these are not bird baths, <laughs> though he asked on his way in. These are what we would call baptismal fonts. They have water in them, and we will use them in the service here in a little bit. Uh, but today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, and we will remember Jesus' baptism. We will read that story, and we will remember our own baptisms as we uh, listen uh, to Jesus' story and listen to the music around that story. So that's what we're going to be up to today. Listen carefully for those themes. And, uh, well, and I guess since we are a church and we are gathered together, maybe we should show a little hospitality to one another this year of hospitality. Why don't you stand up and say hi to the people around you.
Join your voice with mine, singing our praises, 158, Jesus shall reign, and let's stand as we sing. we and all creation praise you today. You made us and you called us good. You love us no matter who we are and we love you. Today we're thinking about baptism, the baptism of Jesus, the one without blame who chose to step into the waters. We will remember our baptisms, that time when we reached out to Jesus. We have those joyful moments and we sing and we dance to Jesus. We experience pain and fear and we cry to Jesus. When we aren't sure what our next step is, we fall on Jesus. Hear our prayers and our praise today as we celebrate baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join with me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin and notice that it is taken from Psalm 42. As the deer longs for the flowing streams, our spirits thirst for the presence of God. My soul longs for the living God here and now. At times, we are encumbered by life. We feel the weight of illness, grief, loss, and sin. We find ourselves asking, why am I so disquieted and downtrodden? We find ourselves asking, where is our God? Deep calls to deep, the psalmist says. Our deep need reaches out for a deep answer. Sometimes it takes a while. Holding God, the psalmist says, for God is steady. God is present, God is our help. We bring our joys, our sorrows, our sins, and our virtues today. We bring all of who we are to worship today, knowing that all of who we are is welcome here. For that deep and gracious truth, let us lift our voices in thanks and praise to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.
The prophet sings his first servant song and celebrates the calling of God's people. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching." Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here ends the first lesson. Now, if you would, get your heart ready, your mind ready to say your prayers this morning. Good and gracious God, we, your people, have gathered here again this Sunday. We've gathered on a Sunday that calls us to reflect upon baptism, and in particular, the baptism of Jesus. We reflect this morning, O oh God, on what it means that Jesus would wade into the water with John in that river so many years ago. We reflect, O oh God, what it means for us and our lives, what kind of call that it puts on us, and what kind of purpose that it gives us. God, it's in that spirit that we bring our petitions this morning. We ask you to look after those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who have lost a loved one, we ask that you look after those who are in war-torn places in the world. We ask that you look after those who are in what seem to be war-torn places here at home. God, we ask that you will help us to know how to respond to crises like drug issues in our town and in our state. We ask that you will help us to be faithful as we try to follow Jesus each and every day of the week. God, part of that faithfulness is our prayer life. And God, we know that we have to practice prayer to get good at it, if we can get good at it. 
So God, on Sunday mornings, we join our voices together and practice that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, praying boldly and in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn response is number 49, and it's taken from the psalm that we read earlier. Let's sing the first verse together. Anybody else young at heart want to come down or save me room, Madison? This is kind of like young adults, young at heart. I think that's how me and Tracy stay in. We're just young at heart. Well, you all look so good today in your white robes and sing so pretty. I'm proud of you. You know that? Today's baptism of the Lord day, and I had some questions for you. Who is John the Baptist? Jesus is cousin. Jesus' cousin, that's right. And why did Jesus want to be baptized? Don't know? Okay. He wanted to be an example for us to show us that he did it. He wants us to be able to do it. Uh, what did John the Baptist want Jesus to do to him? Baptize. That's right. But Jesus knew that if he baptized John the Baptist, everybody wouldn't be baptized by Jesus, and you couldn't, everybody couldn't be baptized by Jesus, so he was an example. Uh, did Jesus need to be baptized? No, that's right, he didn't have no sin. He didn't, he's never sinned. He just did it for an example to us. Uh, do you have to be a certain color to be baptized? No. No? Well, that talk a certain way. Can you speak different languages and be baptized? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you have to look a certain way? No. no you can be. Jesus wanted everybody to be baptized. They wanted to believe in him and be baptized. Uh, have any of you all been baptized? Well, you all talk to me constantly with them outside of church. <laughs> I can't get you to hush, and now I can't get you to talk to me. Yes or no? No? Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm telling you. I was 44 when I got baptized. So I ain't got, you all got plenty of time to worry about that. I waited until I was 44, and some of you might have seen it. Was you all here? Because I thought maybe you might have been here. But Well, I'll tell you what. Zach wants us to feel, dip your hands in the water to kind of remember your own baptism. Well, I remember my baptism like it was yesterday. When I come up out of the water, I felt so clean. I felt like I'd been scrubbed with a brush. Because when you go into the water, it represents you're taking your old life with you, and then when you come out, it's your new life. And you wash your sins away. The water cleans you, uh, cleans you of your sins. And if, uh, if you ever want to be baptized, talk to your parents. Or if you're older, talk to your pastor. Tell him what you want to do. 
I remember I went and talked to Zach on a Monday, and I was like, I want to do it sometime, but not, not anytime soon. Just let me think about it. And Tuesday, I was calling him back and said, let's do it. I just <laughs> couldn't get it off my heart. I just had to do it. So that's what Jesus wanted us to do. And after I've been baptized, since Jesus came into my heart, sadness has turned to joy. Doubt has turned to faith. Worry has turned to trust. Fear has turned to confidence. Whatever Jesus has done for you, tell others so they can know him too. So if it ever gets on your heart, talk to your parents, talk to Zach, and just do it. Don't do like me and keep putting it off and putting it off and worrying and losing sleep night after night. Okay? So would any of you like to do the prayer? Madison's going to do the prayer for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to show us the way of being baptized. Thank you for the love that you showed us in Jesus Christ. I ask you to continue to bless this church and let it continue to grow in all this we ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Good job. Did good. All of us did good. Now after that church, you can talk to me again. Jesus goes down to the River Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, and with whom I am well pleased. Here ends the Gospel lesson. In our hymn of stewardship, number 278, we are travelers on a journey. Let's stand, please. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings you have given us all. May we all give with gladness, sincerity, and open hearts. Bless these tithes and offering this day. In your name we pray. Amen.
Doesn't it, doesn't it do your heart good to see uh, these white choir robes up here? <laughs> you know, we're proud of you all. In case uh, you didn't hear Kevin say it, uh, we are. We're very proud of you guys. Thank you. Um, if you've missed it, uh, I'll remind you, today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. To miss it at this point, you would have had to have nodded off about minute two. But some of you have that capacity. Not very many, but a few. Um, and anyway, that's just the friendly reminder of what today, uh, today is. I want to begin the sermon today by asking a question, and that question is, why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? What is it that you seek here? What keeps you coming back? Why do you come to church? Uh, a good but easy answer would be God. Be a good answer, kind of easy. More specifically, you could say Christ. Still easy, but still good. Another good, easy answer would be communion or fellowship with other people. That's not a, not a bad answer. Friendships, uh, living life together, uh, that, those are good answers. Still, another good but easy answer would be, I like to serve other people. I like to make the world a better place. I like to help those who are in need. Those are all good answers. They're all right answers. They're all easy answers. But I call them good but easy because they are a little bit vague. Now, they're a little bit vague, but they're the answers that we usually give when we are asked that question, why do we come to church? They're good, they're true, and they're vague. We do come seeking God, seeking community, trying to do good and make the world a better place. But why do you come to church in a deeper way than that? What draws you to this place? What keeps you coming back? This week, I read and listened to a few sermons by preachers that I admire. After last week and my giving you homework to go listen to Craddock and Long on YouTube, I thought I better at least do the homework that I gave to you. But I listened and I also read, and, um, and one sermon in particular uh, was especially appropriate for Baptism of the Lord Sunday. The sermon was not a sermon on baptism at all. Um, it wasn't even a sermon on the two lessons that we read this morning from Isaiah and Matthew. Instead, this sermon borrowed language from the 42nd Psalm, which the call to worship was based on. And, uh, and that psalm uh, was the impetus for this sermon about something called depth or deep. The line in that psalm that I so like is deep calls to deep. Deep calls to deep. The sermon was written and preached by a man named Harry Emerson Fosdick. During his long tenure as the senior pastor of the Riverside Church in New York City in the early 20th century. In preaching circles, Fosdick is known as the pioneer of a preaching style that has variously been called a bunch of poor things, like self-improvement sermons, Ugh. life situation sermons, that's a little better, and heretical. It's true. Uh, Harry Emerson Fosdick was no, uh, no uh, chicken. And he was no uh, stranger to uh, conflict, but he was a good preacher, whether you call it self-improvement, life situation, uh, or uh, heretical. Fosdick uh, preached this sermon, and this sermon that he preached on borrowed from that line in the 42nd Psalm. 
Uh, that's that line that says, deep calls to deep. Fosdick would pick that line because Fosdick loved to start in the pew with his sermon. Fosdick loved to start in the life situation, hence the name, of the people that he preached to. Fosdick uh, loved to make room in worship, in preaching, for the various facets of human life. Fosdick was not the guy that had to have an uplifting, happy, joyful word every Sunday morning. Fosdick wanted to make room for that, but also for grief, for anger, for sadness, too. And when he comes across deep calls to deep, it calls out to him. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of the waterfalls. Fosdick begins quoting the 42nd Psalm. Every serious life has that experience, he continues, where the profundities within ask for an answering profundity without. Now, we don't use the word profundity too often these days, but it, it means the deeper things in life, the profound things. Every serious life has that experience, he says, where the profundities within ask for an answering profundity without. Then, at that point, no longer will the shallows suffice. He says, deep calls to deep. Why do you come to church? Why do you come here? What draws you to this place Sunday after Sunday after Sunday? I come most Sundays because I think I get what Fosdick is talking about here. I come because I am finding over time that my life needs a story that is large enough to hold it through the good times and the bad. A bigger story, a very large story, the biggest story that I can find. I come because I know that when the deepest parts of my soul call out, the shallows will not suffice. Now, there are many shallow offerings in the world today. They go by names like the American Dream, the Protestant Work Ethic. Anybody guilty of that one? If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Protestant Work Ethic. Yeah, that's right, buddy. I see that hand. Yeah. <laughs> The Protestant work ethic is also hard to say five times fast. That's another one. Capitalism, broadly, could be a shallow. Consumerism could be a shallow. Politics, Lord have mercy, can that be a shallow spot? Sports loyalties can be a shallow if you got any tomatoes, don't throw them, but it's true. And of course, entertainment, uh, it's in the name, I guess. Movies and movie stars, lives, and all these things that we get tuned into. It's not that these things, these shallower things in life, are inherently bad. They bring happiness, they bring enjoyment, they, uh, they meet a need that we have as we live through life. But as the writer of the 42nd Psalm knew, when the deeper parts of our souls call out, the shallows just will not do. They just won't cut it. Those things that dazzle day to day, week to week, that are always on the TV, that are bright and illuminated, but will not call out to the deepest parts of us. As I was writing this sermon, I remembered uh, a few years back a sermon that I listened to. And in that sermon, the preacher was working on this kind of, uh, this deep talk. 
this deep living. And the preacher uh, was pointing out that there are never easy or quick answers uh, on the deep level. And the preacher referenced some stories that were in the news then. You may remember these stories. Uh, it was a series of news releases about soldiers coming back from the war in the Middle East. And it was, a, it was a series of stories about these soldiers and how these soldiers, many of them, were committing suicide. You may remember that. It was probably about five years ago now. And, of course, as the news does, the talking heads on the news come up with all kinds of theories as to why this happens and this trend happens. And so um, some of the worst theories were that young people uh, just can't hack it, uh, which is an awful thing to say, but it was said in, in the news. Other uh, blog commentators might have suggested that, uh, that because of the nebulous way that we do war now, people don't have as much purpose as they would have. You know, wars don't seem to start and end anymore, and they don't seem to have clear enemies anymore. And that makes the fighting of war more difficult. That was a better answer, I thought, than the first one. And then some, some others might even have said that it was because when soldiers came back home, they didn't have the support of the society around them, and they couldn't live on in a new way because they were so isolated. It's not that any of those answers are bad. It's just, uh, to my hearing... Those answers are on the more shallow level. Um, I remember the preacher that uh, was playing with this uh, and talking about it who said that he had recently had a conversation with an army chaplain. An army chaplain who had been overseas had come back and was going back and he had talked to the chaplain about this news cycle and all this speculation and the chaplain um, the, the chaplain pointed to a deeper response. The chaplain said something like this, I speak with many of these young soldiers. It's not that they are weaker or have less conviction. It's not even that they fight in wars that have nebulous boundaries on them. All of that, of course, contributes uh, for sure. But what they don't have what many of them don't have is a story large enough to hold their lives through the hardest thing that they have ever lived through. They don't have that. In other words, what the chaplain I hear saying is, when deep calls to the shallows for an answer, the answer is hollow. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Today and every January, we devote a Sunday midway through the month to remembering the baptism of Jesus. We hear again that conversation between John and Jesus about who would baptize whom. We ask again that question, why on earth does Jesus need to be baptized at all? What is that about? And we, uh, we sing the hymns, we think about, we usually decorate or put a, uh, a beautiful display like this one that Beth did on the communion table. And on Baptism of the Lord Sunday, we try to lean in and peer through and hear what was going on in Jesus' life. And inevitably, we start to think about our own, too. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Uh, today, in the image of Jesus and John in the water, I'm reminded that one time, the deep in me called out and received a deeper answer. That's what baptism is all about, isn't it? 
I remember that day. I think I told you about that day the last time we did baptism of the Lord. That, uh, that I was in a Highland Christian church sitting on the end. And that, uh, and that the preacher was up there inviting people down front to be baptized. And you know, in Christian churches, the baptistry is always full, always ready to go. And, uh, and I went, and I got dunked that day. I had forgotten that I had already been baptized once before in the Roman Catholic Church as an infant. Uh, so uh, twice baptized, I guess. But uh, what I can tell you about that day is that something deep in me was being called to by something deep in the world. And it happened. Why do you come to church? What is it that brings you here week after week? What are you looking for even right now, today? I come because I need a story large enough to hold my life. When I hear of wars and rumors of wars, I need that story. When I can't turn on the news without hearing bad news of an aching world, I need that story. When the noise of our public discourse is so loud and so disjointed that it hurts everyone, I need that story. Why do you come to church? Why are you sitting here today? I come because I need a story that is large enough to hold my life. When surgery or sickness threatens to upend the things that I have worked for, I need a story. When depression or anxiety saps at my joy, I need a story. When hospital beds and home health become the new normal, I'll need a story. When death takes a family member or a friend, I'll need a story. Why do you come to church? What is it that you are looking for today? I come because I need a big story. When the good days come and I am tempted to believe that I can do it on my own, I need a story. When the sun shines and my busyness keeps me from praying and reading and uh, listening, I need a story. When I forget that good days are connected to bad days, that all that negligence in the good days contributes to the bad, I need a story. Why do you come? What do you need? What are you looking for this morning? I come because often the deep within me calls out to deep. And it recognizes depth in this story of Jesus of Nazareth. And more than that, it points to an even deeper truth that just as my eyes, the existence of my eyes, presuppose light, just as me having ears suggests that there is something to be heard in the world, just as my lungs suggest this stuff that I can't see or touch is right in front of my face, just as all those things suggest other things, so too does the deep within me suggest something deeper out there. I call it God. I call it God, that deeper out there that calls to me. And it's what keeps me coming here. It's what keeps me seeking 
and praying and reading and coming here? Why do you come to church? For what do you look for? What do you seek? Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Whether you were baptized as an infant or baptized as an adult, whether you were baptized both ways, whether you were christened or whether you were dunked under the water, whether you were baptized in a Baptist church or a Catholic church or a Christian church or a creek behind a barn. However you were baptized, that was something, something about deep calling to deep. Do you remember it? Do you remember feeling clean or different when you came out of the water? Do you remember later reflecting on it and hearing that it meant that you were chosen by God? I come to church because I need a big story. And the story is one that is full of depth, full of depth, just like this water up here. And it calls out occasionally. I pray this morning for each and every last one of you that when you find yourself in a place of pain or grief or depression, when deep calls out to deep, that you will remember this story and that deep will answer deep. That's my prayer. That's why I come, to listen for the deeper things in life, because they are the only things that will save us. Amen. You know, the funny thing about baptism is that we can be fooled easily into thinking that we were doing something. The truth is that that deep spot in you is there because God called you to the water first. Just like God is calling you now to the water again. In just a few moments as Christy sings, you all, all of you, are invited to come forward down the two aisles, dip your fingers in the water of these fonts, see the, uh, the illustration on the table, and remember your own baptism, the call that it is on your life, and the story that it is that holds your life. And just in case you haven't been baptized yet, you're still welcome to come. And it's still welcome to dip your fingers in the water. Because it just may be the case that in touching that water, you touch something deeper than yourself. Won't you come? <laughs> Can wounded 
sinner, lost and left to die. Raise your hand for love is passing by. And come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. lifted, carried far away, and precious blood has washed away the stain. So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, and live. And like a new to crawl and remember when we walk sometimes we fall so fall on Jesus fall on Jesus fall on Jesus and live sometimes the way is lonely steep and filled with pain so if your sky is dark and pours the rain then cry to Jesus cry to Jesus cry to Jesus and live and when the love spills over closing hymn, hymn number 449, Baptized in Water. Let's stand as we sing. Oh, 
as you prepare to go from this place, receive this benediction, this good word that, believe it or not, is designed to hold you as you go. May the strength of Christ uplift you. The comfort of the Holy Spirit surround you. And the grace and mercy of God give you hope and give you courage this day and every day of your life. Amen. Thank you.